JJ the CPA here, hope you're doing well. So when would you select somebody to be taxed as a partnership versus an S corporation? I'm gonna back up for one second and tell you that a limited liability company, an LLC, can be taxed as anything. It can be a C corp, it could be a sole proprietor, it can be called a disregarded entity and no separate filing. It could file Schedule E, a Schedule F, it could be a, a, a anything, okay? So when you say, well, should I be an LLC or a partnership? That's not at all what you're saying. It's like saying, well, should I be a Texan or, a, or an American? What? No, if you're an American and you live in Texas, then you're a Texan. See what I'm saying? Point is, is that if you're an LLC, all that's saying is I'm legally put together as an LLC. We're now talking tax classification. When would you be a partnership versus an S? Well, there's unlimited circumstances, but I wanted to share with you one that I dealt with a client's uh, determination here actually today. And we were trying to determine based on their investment and their activity, should they be an S Corp or should they be a partnership? Well, what it came down to in these circumstances, so I'm not going to talk to you about every circumstance under the sun. I'm telling you about these circumstances and then the choice that we made. So because of this client, we chose for them to be a partnership just to get to the, the nut of it. But we could have chosen for them to be an S Corp. Now they're an LLC, right? Now the reasoning for the partnership versus the S Corp is that we are anticipating in the early years of there being losses due to depreciation and significant depreciation. Now don't worry, fellow tax pros, this is gonna be a passive activity that didn't really come into play here, believe it or not, but it's gonna be passive. But it wasn't the reason that we chose to be a partnership just because it's gonna be passive, because it could someday be non-passive, but it's definitely passive in the near future. Because S-Corps can be passive, okay? But that wasn't our reasoning. It was in anticipation of losses. When it's a partnership, you get to take losses to the extent of your partner capital, which typically is in the early years, money that you put in, okay? So if we're just talking about losses in the beginning, there's gonna be no income coming out, not gonna be any distributions coming out. There's not gonna be really anything other than losses in the beginning. So if we have losses and we have passive losses, I get it, passive losses are only to the extent of passive income, but guess what? That's the next step in somebody's tax picture, excuse me. What I'm looking at, though, is that I want to allow maximum passive losses. Because with a partnership, we have tax basis, which is partner's capital, but then we also have at-risk basis, which is losses are able to be taken to the extent of what the partner is responsible for on loans, meaning they got skin in the game. They are on that loan. They are on the hook for that loan, okay? Then they get to take losses to the extent of their investment plus whatever that loan is. Now with an S corporation, it's not the case in the second aspect of that. Yes, you get to take losses to the extent of your capital, which is for your shareholder basis, right? So that would be, well, how much money did you put in? You get to take losses to that extent. You gotta remember I'm talking about in the beginning here, okay? There hasn't been any income yet, right? So if we want to take losses beyond whatever their investment is, and there's loans in the S Corp, doesn't matter that's an LLC. If there's loans in the S Corp, they're not going to be able to take losses to the extent of those loans, unless it's a shareholder loan. So the partnership is going to allow this person to be able to get maximum passive losses to the extent of their basis and to the extent of the loans that they're on the hook for that share liabilities. That is why we chose the partnership in this one. So in a S corporation, you're right. Shareholder basis, just like partner basis. That's what we would call tax basis. Money in, money out, income, losses, right? That's what that basis is. For an S corp, that's the extent of what you can take for losses. Passive or not, that's your first step, right? Now, if the shareholder makes a loan to the S Corp, then they can take losses to that extent. Now, if those loans get paid back, they have to reduce down their basis for that. But the partnership here was, we're expecting massive losses in the early phase. It's definitely passive, but we wanna be able to take 
still as many losses as we can to the extent of basis, the partner's capital, as well as then the share of liabilities. Now, you have to look at this carefully. It's not just, oh, there's a LLC, it's taxes of partnership, there's loans, I have share liabilities. Because there's all kinds of different types of liabilities you're signing off on. It has to be one that the partner is on the hook for and in writing. And the operating agreement indicates that they are on the hook for it. And if there's other partners, the operating agreement needs to indicate what happens if that partner is on the hook for it. And to then whatever extent that partner is actually on the hook, then they get what's called share liabilities, which is on the Schedule K-1. And then they can take losses to the extent of that as well. It's called at-risk basis to then take losses. So with this client, uh, they do have passive income from other sources. Uh, they also have active income. So it wasn't even a matter of what well, we're trying to manipulate something to have passive losses. They have got plenty of passive income and they got plenty of non-passive income. That actually wasn't what the factor was. It wasn't even a factor in the S Corp versus the partnership. What it came down to is basis and thinking ahead and allowing them the loss. Now, they're going to have way more passive loss than they have passive income, which is actually not a bad thing for the client because then they'll allow the losses over the years. They'll have the basis to take the losses. And then as they have passive income, either from this activity or other activities, they'll be able to take the passive losses to offset that, taking then that income kind of off the top, if you will, at that higher tax rate. So that's where you're kind of in the minutia in terms of these circumstances of why we chose a partnership instead of an S Corp. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. Check out my CPE as well. I'll put a link in the body of the video to that at, uh, here. And uh, well, I forgot what I already said, so I'm just going to say it again because just so you know, you probably don't know this, but I've just done probably about 15 videos in a row. This is my last one. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. And then don't you ever forget. You've never met a CPA quite like me. Have a great one.